On August 25th, 1997, GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64 was released by Rare under license, under contract from Nintendo themselves. And in this video, we're going to celebrate that. Hi, I'm Misha here, and this will be a bit of a different one, but hopefully a fun one. We're going to count down the top 10 weapons from GoldenEye to celebrate the 25th anniversary. And we're going to compare them to their real-world counterparts, show some shooting footage from both the video game and from the range here, real world. And you're going to see some of my family members. In fact, my uh, youngest cousin not only still had a Nintendo 64 in working order, but had GoldenEye. And with a little bit of fiddling around, we were actually able to connect it to a TV. And so you're going to see some real world playing from my cousins and hopefully we're just going to have a lot of fun as we begin the new month and uh, yeah just try something a bit different let me know what you think and as always if you could please do like share and subscribe and if you'd like to help the channel check out the link to the patreon so now with no further ado starting off our list number 10 grenade So this seemed a good place to start because um, actually the grenades in GoldenEye were pretty impressive for a few reasons. Now, the grenade they used was pretty generic like this, just a pineapple grenade. Some say it looks kind of like a Mark II, which was America's main grenade in World War II that was pretty much phased out during Vietnam. It was just, it's a grenade, guys. But in 1997, the, the physics behind it were, were pretty fun. Now, these would appear randomly in stashes and sometimes... NPCs would, would pull them out instead of shooting you. They were just kind of a random thing, so they could appear on a lot of levels, not just specific ones. And um, when you were holding them, you could actually hold the button down and hold the spoon down after pulling the pin and basically, you know, toss it when you were ready. And when they were tossed, they had pretty good real-world physics for that day and time. And they made a nice little clinky sound when they hit and bounced around. Again, pretty advanced for that day. One really interesting advanced thing that the game did for a grenade, screw this here, was when you tossed it, the pin and spoon were actually off the little model. So it essentially looked very similar to this. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, in a game where hammers were parts of slides and didn't move, the grenade was kind of well thought out, the whole thing. So. It just seemed like it needed to be on the list, even though it's very much a generic gun. This kind of needed to be there. Hey, j -Row, catch. Number nine, the PP-7 Special Issue. So obviously, yeah, the PP7 is the in-game name for a Walther. There you go, people that always like it when I don't say uh, Walther, Walther, but yeah, PPK. Now this is actually a PPKS. This is my shooting one. I picked it up. It's a police surplus. But uh, you know, obviously the most famous James Bond gun introduced a few books into the novel series and from the original films on. Actually, GoldenEye, the film, 1995, was about the last time a PPK was Bond's standard issue gun for a while. After that, they went to the P99, but I digress. It would be 7.65, 32 caliber, according to uh, Q's predecessor, the Quartermaster, in uh, Dr. No. And uh, the P99 
PPK has the shorter barrel and a 7 plus 1 capacity. However, Bond has used the PP, the longer barrel version, with an 8 round capacity. So that's kind of why I picked this one for the video. Now, in the beginning of GoldenEye, we have a suppressed version. In fact, the PP7 suppressed is about the only thing you can get up to about Bunker 2. After Bunker 2, it switches over to the unsuppressed, so the snub nose version like this here. And that is kind of what follows on for the rest of the game. Now, mostly this is a gun that's in your inventory from the beginning, but a few enemies sometimes carry it, including old Boris, everyone's favorite person that likes to talk about butts. Just a fun, cool, classic historic gun that has to be in any James Bond game. And not a horrible starter pistol. There are worse starter pistols in video games. Now, interestingly, you know, people know that Germany made the PP and PPK in the 1930s and 40s. In the 50s, because of the political situation and firearms not being allowed to be manufactured in West Germany, the Walther Company actually licensed out to Minurhin. And for the 1950s, they were the producers of the PP series. I mention this because when the James Bond films kicked off in 1961, it was actually French produced under license guns that were mostly used. Later on, like this one here, the, you would start to see West German marked guns. This one's dated 1969. But actually the parts were still made in France, but then brought over to Germany for final fitting, bluing, test shooting, and all that good jazz. My point is, James Bond carried a French gun. So this one is actually marked West Germany and it was produced by the date code in 1969. But interestingly, the raw parts, the forgings for the frame, the slide, were still made in France. They, uh, they were just fitted together, blued, and proof tested in West Germany. It's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but this has the shorter PPK barrel but the longer PP grip with the PP sized eight round mag. In game, your gun actually does have seven rounds. So they got that right. But the PPKS, pretty neat, kind of a combination. And the one reason this is my shooter, this slightly larger grip is more comfortable if, I'm, if we're being honest. Number eight, actually coming in ahead of the PP7, we have what is in game known as the DD44 Dostoyev or something like that. They're Takarev. So, this is my version. This is a Chinese type 54 and the reason I picked this out of my various Tokarevs obviously Goldeneye takes place mostly in Russia not China that would be the next film but they used a lot of Chinese guns during the filming and it shows up so in the game we have what is basically a Tokarev let's just say it's loud and powerful and a little obnoxious yeah it's a Tokarev and it does appear in various levels, dam, facility. A lot of NPCs will pull it out, even neutrals like scientists. It, it, it's here and there, even being dual wielded a couple of times, like in, I think it's Bunker 2 and Archive. But in game, it's a little bit of a different model. So the game model, kind of the blunt front end, is pretty well done. <laughs> and it does hold eight rounds as on the original. Even though these are all using quote-unquote pistol ammo, it's amazing how much more powerful this one is than that uh, PP7. <laughs> the 
The difference, the grip. This is a pretty standard vertically lined with the metal back strap grip, seen on Russian and Chinese. The one in the game though has wraparound plastic grips that are horizontally ribbed. Now most uh, sites and whatnot report these kind of being like Toki Egypt grips. Toki Egypt was an interesting variant that came out of Hungary. But in reality, China also had an export model, I believe it was the 214 or the 219, that featured very similar wraparound horizontally ribbed grips. So I have a very strong feeling that the game model was based off that Chinese, not exactly a Toki Egypt gun. So the grip, a little less accurate than it would be in the game. It's also hilarious that Russian scientists were pulling out what is effectively a Chinese made Tokarev or DD-44. Let's end with the Type 54 with some fireballs at dusk. in a blue moon the, t the edge of the hollow point will catch on the feed but not bad for a gun that was never designed for HP. Number seven ZMG parentheses 9MM. So the ZMG 9mm, and funny enough, this is the only really gun in the game that has its caliber specified, even though they all use quote unquote pistol ammo, is obviously based on an Uzi. Now, which one? Well, a micro Uzi, which in 1997 was quite new, but a micro Uzi has like a four and a half inch barrel and a very truncated receiver. This is my full size. That is because in game, the model is scaled up to the point that it looks like a full size. So what it's in the game is a overgrown micro, but it is a micro lacking a butt stock. So pulled the wood stock off mine here. And to give a correct barrel profile, I put in the display barrel we've talked about many times before. This gun is kind of an earlier, well, excuse me, late game submachine gun, mostly appearing in caverns and uh, cradle, maybe a few other little places, but um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, and oftentimes you see it being dual wielded by Janus, Yanis, Yanis Marines, which, um, you know who's ever picked up an Uzi? They'd have some arm muscles to have two of these out and actually be able to point and hit anything at a time. <laughs> Still works. So in the game, the Uzi appears to have a 32 round mag, certainly a pretty long mag, so that's what I put in here. As I said, no stock. On a micro, or a mini for that matter, it would be a folding stock. On a full size, you can either have a QD wood stock or an underfolding. And of course, a full size would have a 10 inch barrel, but this is that display barrel. A mini Uzi is a 7.8 inch barrel in a micro. It depends on exactly which variant. Four and a half at the shortest up to about five and some change if you have the compensated one. But yeah, this was pretty close to what was in that video game. So there we go. I would imagine the Z in ZMG was acknowledging the Uzi part, but I could be incorrect in that. Number six, the D5K Deutscht. So in-game, the D5K 
actually comes in the hands of the Janus, Janus, Janus Marines before the Uzi, <laughs> which is kind of funny. You see it quite a bit in the mid missions and then it disappears towards the end. Now what we have here is one of the Pakistani, the POF SMG PKs, which is an MP5K with a few differences. For example, it's a reverse stretch receiver and it has an extended barrel. I picked this one because it's the closest to what we really had in the game. While they mostly model it after the MP5K, the MP5K has a barrel that ends at the handguard. Four and a half inches, five on the outside. The one in the game actually does have a muzzle extended out, but it's a bare muzzle. It doesn't feature a three lug. In game, it has an extended barrel. On this pistol, it's uh, right at six inches and it has half by 28 threads and a three lug, which is standard for a Navy style and newer styles. In the game though, it's just bare muzzle. They probably did that because it would look weird with the barrel chopped off actual MP5K style. But also in one mission, you are starting off with the suppressed D5K Deutsch I believe it is frigate. Now, of course, also in game, it does have a relatively accurate MP5K vertical foregrip, but this is a civilian pistol, so we don't have it. What can you do? On the other hand, in game, it does not have a buttstock. It just has an end cap with a, well, it probably doesn't have a sling loop in the game, but this style, so that is correct for what it is, so. Quite a quo close representation, really. But I think the reason they did it was aesthetics and also because there is one mission, that I believe it is Frigate, where you are starting off with a suppressed, a silenced D5K Deutsch. Now, otherwise, this is a good one. They, it, it's shown with a 30 round mag. Of course, in the game, it has the vertical foregrip, which we don't have on a civilian pistol. But in the game, there is no buttstock. So pretty authentic and accurate. And uh, this was very clearly inspired by the HK. I mean, the Deutsch is there. But what 90s video game would be complete without some kind of MP5, correct? Number five, the US AR-33 rifle. So this might be our first uh, American gun so far. Obviously, AR-15 in the game, it was, it was very clearly an AR. And so I brought out one of mine and it was very clearly an M16, mostly looking like an M16A2. In fact, during development, the, the gun was kind of temporarily named the M16A2 Commando. Now, usually in the real world, the commando version will have a collapsing stock and either an 11 inch, normally, sometimes 14 inch barrels will be called commandos, but typically a commando is a shorty gun, carbine, if you will. But the one in the game is very clearly a full rifle with a fixed butt stock and the long tubular A2 handguard and the barrel. Of course, it shoots rifle ammo and it, uh, has a 30 round magazine. In the game, it does have a zoom, pretty effective one, and it's able to either do full auto or three round burst, depending on how you manipulate the controls. And it can do single shots too, if you're doing the zoomies. It's a, it's a very powerful gun, a little on the loud side, but not a lot of inaccuracy built in, quite powerful. And uh, it appears later in the game. You find it in jungle and caverns and actually, Cradle, the final standard mission, it's the gun that uh, 006 Trevelyan Janus opts to use. So it's actually the gun of the, uh, of the boss. But more famously, it's also the gun that Jaws dual wields in Aztec and a few other 
of the enemies in Aztec have it as well. So it's, it's a later gun and one of the better guns in the game. So I'm glad I had to be here. This is, of course, my uh, M16A2, mostly uh, Colt parts. As in real life in the game, it's pretty much all black. Some other guns were not as lucky when it comes to their textures. And the, uh, the round handguard works pretty well for the, the polygon state of the game. Not a whole lot of detailing they had to put in. It does have the tall A2 front sight. I'm not sure if it has a birdcage flash adder on it, really. The polygons also work in its favor, relatively speaking, for the AR mag because it's not super curvy and it does have more kind of built-in angles. Since it was assembled from Lego polygons, it looks a little funky, but it's not, not the weirdest in the world. But the same can't be said for the carry handle and rear sight. This, this part really kind of suffers in the game. The angle of this is a little weird, but this back here is just pretty much a, a brick. And uh, the stock, it's relatively okay to render. Probably a lot easier for them to do than, say, a collapsible stock. Probably why they picked it. And it's a relatively straight angle, but it does seem to look a little stubby in the game. But I would imagine that's so that the uh, characters could hold it properly. Again, as we've talked about already, the articulation to hold weapons was pretty limited in GoldenEye. But it was actually still one of the first games to even have that. Even going to games like Quake, you just had like a generic gun in your player's hand. Not something that tried to resemble what they were actually shooting. So it was advanced for the day, but they had to make some, some compromises. Overall, you can tell it's an AR, but yeah, it's in in the, in the general shape. AR fifteen A two. Now, you might be wondering why they did not do the M4, you know, the current thing. Think about it. In 1997, when this gun came out, the M4 was very new. It was only adopted in 1995 and didn't really start to see major use until 98, 99, even 2000. Now, when GoldenEye was being developed and when it was released, the M16A2 was still very much the standard in the U.S. military. So the game did have... America's standard-ish gun properly rendered. Uh, carbines just had not really come into wide-scale use at that time. So I, I don't know. I just thought I'd point that out, remind people. And it's not an M16A1. That's a different deal. You know, it had a different shape handguard. But, um, yeah, it was the current up-to-date version. So, again, points for the people at Rare kind of knowing what was up. Although our next gun, not quite as accurate. Number four, the KF-7 Soviet. Hungarian SA 85M. Now the joys of underfolders. So, the one I picked out of my AK collection, you know, I, I have a couple of AKs. My Chinese. 56S-1, well, as you know, 156S-1, but this is a perfect representation of what's in GoldenEye, and the KF-7, as they call the AK-47, because everyone knows that's a trademark name, appeared in 
a lot of the missions, especially the, the, the early ones, you know, dam facility, but even a lot of the later missions because they were still inside Russia. But as you've noticed watching this video, a lot of the stuff was modeled after Chinese. So we picked the Chinese version of the AK under folder. Now, in the game, this is a very loud, relatively inaccurate gun. And yeah, it, it, it is reasonably powerful and it does have a bit of a zoom, which is kind of neat, but not as much as that AR-33 we just looked at. It has a 30 round mag. Of course, it uses the rifle ammo. And um, what else? It's, it's, it's a freaking AK. Y you know what it is. But of course, it being based off the Chinese instead of the Russian, there are some differences. So uh, we'll get a little up close and personal. 56 2. <laughs> So the first real dead giveaway in game, as much as it can be seen, it has an, the Chinese style hooded ring front sight instead of the more Russian. It also, for that matter, back here at the handguard, has the smoother style instead of the Russian palms well. But of course, you could always just attribute that to basic um, polygons. But interestingly, the muzzle here, in the game, they put on a brake, kind of to make it look like an AK-74, because of course, even in the early scenes in, in the late 80s in the game, the AK-74 would be the standard, not the AKM or original AK-47. So to kind of make it look more modern, they stuck a brake on. And uh, that, that's something that you saw a lot in Hollywood, going back to even like Red Dawn, because you couldn't get 74s back then. So what I did here for this gun, the original AKs in 7.62x39 were threaded 14x1 for the most part. A standard break like this here for an AK-74 is of course threaded 24 millimeter. That will not fit. Now what I was going to use, the AMD 65 break. It is threaded 14 millimeter and, you know, kind of looks the part. It's at least a break that fits the threads. But then I remembered I had an old, I believe it is Tapco brand, faux 74 break threaded for 14 millimeter. So for this video, I thought we'll screw it on here. That's really all they did to make it look like the uh, AK-74 though. So guys, I knew I had this break and I was really happy when I dug it out of the, uh, the drawer. This was the break that was originally put on my Romanian SAR-2 like 20 years ago. I don't know how I've managed to lose so much over the years that I needed and not something like this that's normally quite useless. Once I put on the correct Romanian front side base, this of course came off my gun. But since like I said, a regular one would not fit, and an AMD is not quite right. I thought this would be perfect. So j Rio showed up, and we were getting ready. I thought, okay, I'll screw this on. Wrong. Apparently, when they had put this on my gun originally, they used a lot of Loctite, so the threads were all locked up. It took me, like, 20 minutes to screw it on. I had to, like, tighten it down, break it, you know, go off, get dust out the leftover Loctite and then start over and over. That's why it's not totally screwed down all the way. You can see a little bit of a gap here. I, get, I was like, hey, get enough. Um, but hey, the thing I do yeah, for the love of guns and for you guys, but it's like, ah, Loctite. It, as I joked with Jerry, I said, sometimes the stuff that seems like it would take three seconds and be just easy peasy ends up being the biggest stuff, such as working on things. So moving on back, it has a smooth top covering game, but of course, again, that could just be you know, basic polygons. The reason we know it's a 56-1 is it doesn't have the rear tang in stock. Now, in the game, it doesn't have a stock folded up. It actually just doesn't have a buttstock. 
I'm a little unsure why. They could have probably easily rendered a simple folded up stock, but they didn't. So basically it's a 56 dash one with the stock not there, just omitted. Yeah, whatever. And interestingly, the magazine, it has a 30 round mag in game. And I was wondering if they would just maybe use a Bakelite style mag to make it look like a 74, but no, it's just a regular gray or black mag. But interestingly, because an AK mag is very curvy, very constant curve. And because the game was, say it with me again, pretty low polygon, it looks more like it's made out of Lego, <laughs> you know, kind of angles and shifts and things. When we looked at that AR-33, the AR mag is a little better because it has some more sharp angles in it. Because of the constant curve, the mag's a little primitive. But again, early days, we were just happy to have polygons. Obviously, you also didn't really have a moving uh, bolt handle as you shot because that was a little more than games of that day could do. But it did eject spent cartridges. I believe they were uh, sprites. It might have been very simple um, polygons, but I think it was probably sprites out the side. But um, one of the earliest rifles you would uh, you would get in the game, and there's something kind of funny about old James Bond carrying around a Russian slash Chinese AK. <laughs> Number three, the RC P90. So, why is this number three so high on the list? Well, there's actually a few reasons. One, you know I really like my PS90 here. This is, of course, the civilian version. And the civilian version was not introduced in America officially until 2005, but realistically, it wasn't really available until at least 2006. And for those that can do math, that's nearly a decade after GoldenEye came out. Having a version of this gun in the game is pretty forward-thinking. The original P90 was yeah, nominally released in 1990, but it wasn't really finalized until 1993. And when you look at acquisitions by various police departments and whatnot, they're actually after GoldenEye. When the game came out, of course, remember development was 95, 96. The P90, the FN P90, was a very brand new gun and even gun concept it's amazing that it made its way in any form at all into the game and uh, it's certainly a memorable gun it's only in a few missions uh, Xenia has one in jungle and uh, sometimes marines will pull these out in uh, caverns and cradle you often dual wielding unlike the uzis this is one you could actually dual wield quite effectively in fact it is meant to be fired single-handed one fun thing, and we'll talk about other inaccuracies, in the game, this, well, I should say in reality, this already has a huge ammunition capacity of 50 rounds. In the game, it's 80. No one really knows if that was done intentionally or if they mixed up the hesedecimal numbers, but either way, huge capacity. It does shoot pistol ammo, but it's very rapid fire, and it's able to penetrate doors, and it's pretty OP. However, it's also pretty funky looking. It's such a weird gun. It's been a few years, huh? So obviously the PS90 has the longer barrel. In game, we do have the correct 10 and a half inch barrel. Well, more or less. It's one of the few things they got right, <laughs> aside from maybe the general shape. In the real world, this sight, sometimes called a carry handle, but it's really just a non-magnified sight. It's basically just a chunk, a bar in the game. That's not as bad as the magazine. In the real world, obviously, it's a, it's a mag. In PS90. And 
TNG board. In game, it's just kind of a white brick. It's not defined. Certainly there was no bullets. It's not even really clear if the designers knew if this was a magazine. To be fair, obviously someone at Rare knew about guns, was on the kind of the cutting edge of guns. But also to be fair, they're in Britain. Not a lot of firearms ownership in Britain. So they probably had some knowledge, but not a ton. And another good example is back here. In game, it ejects shells out the side. There's a problem because there's no holes in the side. As you know, the P90 and PS90 eject from the bottom and they did not obviously know that. But again, in 1997, who did? This was an unknown gun, so that's why it's so high. It's one of those A for effort guns, if that makes sense. Plus, it's a really badass gun in the game. I mean, it's, yeah. And plus, I like bringing out the P90 anytime I get a chance. Okay. Number two, the generically named rocket launcher. So this is my runner wrap just because it is so iconic in the game. Interestingly so, because it's only in really one mission, Streets, wherein it's dual wielded, single shot weapon. I think it does appear in one more level that you can pick it up, Depot, but um, I feel like there's something weird there, like you keep, there's no rockets for it, I don't know. Anyway, it's really only one mission, but it's iconic for the game because of, well, you know, the rocket launcher cheat code mode where every enemy has it. Yeah, plus of course multiplayer. Now, this here is a Russian RPG-7, which is in various versions still in use today and appeared in the 60s. Now in game what we have is yet again a Chinese version, a Type 69. Well, you know, sort of. So yeah, we're kind of seeing this trend. It, in real life it is a single shot, single action, launching tube device. But there are some major differences between the real world and the game, of course. Be very, very quiet. We're hunting wabbits. So, notice my hands, two pistol grips, something very iconic for the RPG-7 and, of course, the Type 69. In game, though, the rear grip is, is gone. Now, there's a practical reason the way the models held guns in the game at the time really didn't allow them to articulate in a way to, to have two grips, so they just got rid of it. Much the same reason a lot of guns don't have shoulder stocks in the game. It's just, it's just easier to to model them that way. So they got rid of it. Keep in mind, this was just shortly after Quake had been out and it was on a console. So no, you know, no shame to them, no shade there. And it did have kind of representations of these uh, sights here. This one's stuck. There we go. In the game, it had sort of iron sights, but not fully realized here. Of course, in reality, typically this was used with an optic. And it did have the warhead that launched out. But probably the most noticeable thing in game, it lacked texturing for this wood heat shield slash cheek piece. In the game, the thing is nominally there, but it's just kind of a monotone with the unit, with the, I don't say firearm, the weapon itself. Like a lot of things, 
pretty roughly rendered and again a lot of the problem with the N64 was the texture limitations and it really did show on the rocket launcher but it was such an iconic part of the game so fun and I had this RPG 7 to show you so why not it's our runner-up today number one have you guessed it it really could only be the club This is interesting. In some ways, this might be the most accurately rendered gun in the game, and I don't know why. Possibly the worst gun in all of GoldenEye is the most iconic gun from GoldenEye. Yeah, in game known as the Club. In the real world, it is the Czechoslovakian SAVZ61 Scorpion. In the real world, it fires 7.65, so the same ammo as a PP7 in game, or PPK. And in the real world, it either has a 10 round compact or 20 round extended mag. And in the game, it's a 20 round mag. In the real world, early on, it had wood grips, and later, polymer in the game, wood grips. In the real world, it had a top folding stock that looked like it was made out of a coat hanger. And interestingly, this was actually rendered in the game. Most of the other guns that had folding stocks, they just removed the stock. They went to the trouble to render the stock folded, of course, on the gun. To be fair, it was literally just like a line. But yeah, this being a semi-automatic pistol, it doesn't have that. But this is otherwise an original uh, gun. <laughs> In the, in the real world, this was definitely a communist gun. It was actually one of the earliest true PDWs. But even in the real world, firing such a weak cartridge, and with a relatively small mag, you know, had limited utility. In the game, it really is bad. Um, not only is it weak, it has a small magazine capacity, and it is super inaccurate. Friends used to joke, playing the game that looked like someone was coming at you holding two sparklers because the only way you could do anything with this was to hopefully do a wield it and maybe do something but uh, it is uh, certainly recognizable it's not in a ton of missions it's in the surface one and surface two it's in bunker one bunker two and I believe a pair might appear in archives but of course multiplayer it you know appears a lot more too the story behind it in the game, it started off being called the Scorpion or VZ-61, but when they decided not to use real world names for whatever reason, it was known as the Spider, which actually kind of makes sense, wiry and yeah. That name was kept for a very long time, but not long before the gun was published, it was changed to Clob, the game was published, sorry. It, the gun name was changed to Clob, as it's very famously known, it was after Ken Lob. But the reason for the change, there was a paintball gun known as a Spider in the 90s. And I actually remember that gun. I, I've shot one before. A friend had one. And they were worried that, especially since the game had paintball mode, that the combo of the name Spider and having paintball mode would maybe... But let's just change it. In fair play, Spider is a very generic name. Clob. Well, it's just, it's just iconic. Maybe not for good reasons, or the reasons it might want to be, but it is. I really wasn't exaggerating when I said they rendered this well in game. Thinking of major gross inaccuracies, again, keeping in mind the limitations of the Nintendo 64, they got the barrel, and of course it's a smooth, they didn't have to worry about, like on the D5K, it did have the stock, very blocky receiver, that translated well, they even pretty accurately represented the curve 20 round mag, it does have basic sights in the game, 
course they're pretty low detail. And in the game it does have a wood pistol grip. Unlike with the RCP90, which often had wood textures because of a, not bug in the game, but a quirk of the game, this actually was meant to have wood, so huzzah, I guess that's good. The, um, the real world gun, while it had the stock, it was actually a QD stock too, so. I don't know, this is a cool little gun. And these started appearing in America around 2006, and I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I bought one because it was the fucking club from Goldeneye. Well, I hope this was a lot of fun for you. To be honest, the video was a lot of work and required some travel and some electronic dinking around with and getting quite a few guns and other things out, but it really was a good, good time for hopefully all involved. And of course, this was a collaboration that involved several people Again, including family members of mine. Let me know what you think. Just, again, trying to have fun and do something different. If you are more interested in the history and the real world aspects of the guns, we've done several videos on them in the past, and I'm sure we can do more in the future. But for now, it just seemed fun to compare them to a video game. There really was the beginning of a first person shooter on a console, especially multiplayer. Interesting stuff. But if you could, as I said at the beginning, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help check out the channel, there's a link to our Patreon page. So please go visit that if you can. This is Misha, and we will all catch you very soon next time.